Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back. My name is Samira and this is my most anticipated book releases of 2024. I've picked 12 books for this list today. We all know the dates might change a bit. And of course, there might be books that are not yet announced or maybe I haven't heard of. But for now, these 12 have caught my eye. I have two books for January and the first one of them is Emily Wilde's Map of Other Lands written by Heather Fawcett. This is book number two in the Emily Wilde series and I'm so excited for it because I really love the first book. The first book was called Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. You might have heard of it. That was really good. In the second book, we're still following Emily and Wendell as they go adventuring together, but I'll try to keep the description spoiler free for you guys who haven't read the first book. In this one, mysterious fairies from other realms start appearing at the university and Professor Emily Walt has to, you know, uncover the secrets behind their appearances before it's too late. Emily is a genius a scholar of fairy folklore and she's learned so many things along her adventures and of course from her former rival, Wendell Bumblebee. Despite the complicated feelings between these two, Emily is not yet ready to take a step forward and, of course, she has a new project to focus on the map of the other land. However, Wendell Bumblebee lands her in trouble yet again. I'm so excited for this book. This one, I think it's supposed to happen in Austria, in, you know, Austrian Alps. I'm not sure. Uh, I think the setting is going to be there, but, and that, that ensures the coziness, guys. It, it means we're going to have the cozy vibes once more and it's perfect for a winter read and i think in one of the reviews of one of the guys who read the art version of this book that this is not the end of the story for emily's adventures i don't know if anything is announced yet but i'm very happy that this is not the end we're gonna have more of it hopefully the second book on my list is something i don't know much about it's a book called Feybound, written by sara el arifi I think this is a romanticy and the description kind of caught my eye, so I'm going to give it a shot and see if it's something I might enjoy. The description says, Divided by blood, imprisoned by fate, bound by desire. Welcome to the intoxicating world of the Fae. I like that. This book has a mix of elves and Fae. I mean, I think they're separate things here. In fairy folklore, elves are usually part of the fairy community. I'm not, I'm not, sure. I'm not sure how the division is going to go in here, but I think they're separate things in this book. So in Feybound, we're going to meet Yiron, a warrior in the Elven army, and her sister, Littell, who's I think a diviner, who has prophecies for a better future. But when Yiron makes a fatal mistake, they're both exiled to the wilderness beyond their borders, and there they encounter the impossible, the Fey Court, which hasn't been seen for a millennium. Now torn between their loyalty to each other, their homeland, and their hearts, Yiron and Littell must navigate the seductive world of Fae. I thought that was interesting enough. I don't know the author. I haven't heard much about the book, but I'm going to give it a shot. For February, I have three books on my radar, and the first one of them is The Tainted Cup, written by Robert Jackson Bennett. Now, this book has a beautiful cover. There are already some reviews, great reviews, of those who have read the art version of the book, and I have high hopes for this one. The description is a bit confusing, but I'm going to present a very simplified version of it, at least what I got from it. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, this is book one in the Shadow of the Leviathan series. This is sort of like a mystery fantasy kind of thing, I think. The description for the Tainted Cup is technically saying that a high imperial officer is found dead, apparently killed in his mansion with a tree growing out of his body. That's crazy. So they call in the best investigator for the job. She's called Anna Delabra. Yes, Anna Delabra. And she's known for being brilliant, but also weird. And she has this new assistant called Dinius Cole, who's I think they call an engraver because he has a perfect memory thanks to the magical alterations done to him. His job is to be Anna's eyes and ears, which is very important because she insists on wearing a blindfold and she never leaves her home. I mean, it keeps getting weirder. As these two start uncovering the secret behind this scheme that kind of threatens the safety of the Empire itself, Dean realizes that he doesn't know much about Anna and he wonders how long he'll be able to keep his own secrets safe from her piercing intellect. This was the simplified version of what the plot suggested. I mean, the whole thing was a bit confusing for me, but this is what I got from it. And the Tainted Cup is said to have Holmes and Watson style pairing, gloriously labyrinthine plot, and a wholly original fantasy world. This seems interesting, and because 
some of the arc readers that I trust have already said this is a perfect book. This is a perfect mystery fantasy. I'm going to check it out even though it was a bit tough understanding what's going on. But I'm going to keep an eye on this to see if it might turn out to be something good. I have high hopes actually. Number four on the list is The Book of Doors written by Gareth. Brown. I don't know anything about this book. I don't know the author. And the only thing that caught my attention was the first line of the description. And I said, I'm going to check this book out. It says, if you could open a door to anywhere, where would you go? This is obviously a portal fantasy kind of book. And I really love those because of my childhood, Narnia. So if a book has books and portals and a magical world, I'm probably going to read it. Let me tell you very briefly what the book is about. Cassie Andrews is a New York City bookseller living her quiet life until one day a gift from a favorite customer changes everything. The book of doors filled with strange writings and mysterious drawings gives the one who owns it extraordinary powers. So Cassie and her best friend Izzy start on this journey of exploration, traveling anywhere they desire using this book. But there are dangerous and ruthless individuals after these kind of magical books. So Cassie and her friend have to seek help from a guy who knows a lot about these kind of stuff, these magical books. And things get complicated, but the punchline is not every door should be opened. Maybe it would become a favorite read, who knows. Number five on the list and another one of February releases is called A Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel L. Jensen. This is book one in a fantasy series called Saga of the Unfated. The premise sounded really cool and it has Norse stuff in it, so I was intrigued. The description says a shield maiden blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power-hungry king while also fighting her growing desire for his fiery son in, his, in this Norse-inspired fantasy romance. I'm not sure if this one would fall under the romantic genre. I'm really not sure, but either way, it doesn't matter. I think the story is promising. Bound in an unwanted marriage, Freya spends her days dreaming about becoming a warrior and putting an axe in her husband's back. So her dream abruptly becomes a reality when her husband betrays her to the regent's Jarl. Uh, I don't know why he betrays her. I, I, I have no idea what happens. It, it doesn't say. And she kind of ends up in a fight to the death with the Jarl's son. This is vague. I don't know what happens. Freya's survival in this fight kind of depends on her revealing her deepest secret, which is she has a drop of goddess blood which in turn makes her a shield maiden that gives her the power to repel any attacks there's also this prophecy that i'm going to read for you it was foretold such a magic would unite the fractured nation of scotland beneath the one who controls the shield maiden's faith so that's what the fanatical jarl is going to try to do he i think the jarl binds freya with a blood oath and he tries to control her faith this story seems interesting and i do like the norse twist I'm gonna check it out. Oh, and I'm not sure what happens to the husband, but the romance is between Freya and Jarl's son, Bjorn, I think, if I'm pronouncing the names right. Moving on to the month of April, I have five books on the list. The first one of them is A Short Walk Through a Wide World, written by Douglas Westerbeek. This one is a standalone, and again, I haven't heard anything from anyone I trust, but the premise sounded very interesting. It says the invisible life of Addie LaRue meets life of Pi in this dazzlingly epic debut that charts the incredible adventurous life of one woman as she journeys the globe trying to outrun a mysterious curse that will destroy her if she stops moving. I like that premise, even though the invisible life of Addie LaRue kind of disappointed me, but that was because of the Fossian deal and because I expected more of that side of the story. But this also seems very interesting it might be really cool so i put it on the list the story starts in paris 1885 nine-year-old aubrey horvel comes across a wooden puzzle she kind of tosses it away but she can't get rid of it it comes back to her bottom line she's cursed days later she starts bleeding to death and when medical treatment fails she flees to the outskirts of the town where she realized that this act of movement is what's keeping her alive and so begins her lifelong journey on the run from her condition. She can't stay anywhere more than a couple of days, and she can't return to any place she's already been. The description of this book was really cool. I'm gonna check it out. Number seven on the list is The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. This is a historical fantasy. I don't have much experience with historical fantasies. They intimidate me a little bit, but because it's Lee Bardugo, I'm gonna read it. And of course, the concept of familiars ha has always been my thing. 
Let me tell you what I know about the story. Luzia Cotada is a scullion living in a shabby house on a shabby street in Madrid. But she has a tiny bit of magic that helps her get through her days. Unfortunately, her scheming mistress catches wind of this and she forces Luisa to use her magic to improve their social standing. It starts off as a fun little game for the board nobility, but things start getting dangerous once Luzia catches the attention of a guy named Antonio Perez, the disgraced secretary to the king of Spain. Luzia is then pulled into this ward of seers and alchemists and holy men, and she has to use every bit of her wit and will to survive, even if it means enlisting the help of a familiar called Gillen Sant Angel, who's an immortal familiar who has deadly secrets that could endanger them both the premise of this book confused me so much maybe it's because it's historical fantasy i don't know but it's written by lee bordugo and it's about enlisting a familiar so i'm gonna read it obviously number eight on the list is another april list it's called the dead cat tail assassins written by p jelly clark i hope i pronounced that right this one is a standalone and it's about assassins the description says that dead cat tail assassins are not cats nor do they have tails, but they are most assuredly dead. Avin the Eviscerator is a skilled, discreet professional who is here for your most pressing needs in the ancient city of Talabisi. The guild is strong, the blades are sharp, and the rules are simple. This board is a bit confusing, but those sworn to this guild are resurrected, they're deadly, and their memories is wiped. They have only three unbreakable vows. First, the contract has to be just. Second, she can only kill the contracted target. She's a professional and she's never missed her mark. Third, once she starts the job, once she accepts the job, she has to carry it out, no matter what. And if she strays, death. Things get more interesting when a festival turns the city upside down and Evine's newest mission brings her face to face with a past she's not supposed to remember and a vow she can't forget. This is one of those weird books, I don't know where it's gonna go, but it caught my attention, so here it is. Number nine on the list is How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying by Django Wexler. This is the weirdest book I have on this list. I mean, the cover kind of reminds me of Assistant to the Villain. It seems like a TikTok sensation to me. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. But it seems like that type of book. But the title is so fun that I just have to read it. Let me read you what it is about. A young woman tired of defending humanity from the Dark Lord decides to become the Dark Lord herself. Davi has done this all before. She's tried to be the hero and take down the all-powerful Dark Lord. A hundred times she's tried, but the time loop always gets her in the end. Sometimes she's killed quickly, sometimes it takes a while. But she's been defeated every time. This time she's done being the hero and done being stuck in this endless time loop. If the Dark Lord always wins, then maybe that's who she needs to be. It's Davy's turn to play on the winning side. That's all I know. That's all I needed to know because the title is so catchy. I mean, I have to check it out. Maybe it's really good. It says it's very funny. I, I don't believe that anymore. But they say it's very funny. Um, she's going to become the Dark Lord. I like that concept. There's a time loop. I assume there's not going to be much word building to this type of book. But I'm intrigued. I have to check it out. <laughs> Number 10 on the list is the last book for April, and it's the only romance on the list. I have Funny Story by Emily Henry. Of course, I'm gonna read whatever Emily Henry writes, but this book actually has the kind of premise that's my cup of tea. Our main character, Daphne, is engaged to this guy called Peter. They're in love, she moves to Michigan to be with him and to start their new life, but Peter suddenly realizes that he's actually in love with his childhood best friend, Petra. This is where the actual story begins. Daphne is stranded in Michigan with no family or friends. She only has a dream job as a children's librarian, which also barely pays the bills, but moving on. So she decides to become roommates with Petra's ex, Miles Nowak. Roommate trope, I'm here for it. Miles is a scruffy and chaotic and the exact opposite of practical Daphne. These two mostly avoid each other until they become friends and they come up with the plan to post misleading photos of their summer adventures together. Of course, it's all for the show at the beginning, but we all know where that might lead. I really love the idea of this book. This book has all the tropes I actually enjoy and none that I dislike in the romance genre. So I have very high hopes for this one. I mean, I tend to have high hopes for Emily Henry's books, but this one... This seems perfect. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a time jump 
because the next book on my list comes out in August. It's called Ghostsmith, written by Nikki Popreto. This is book two in the House of the Dead duology. I'm actually not sure if this is going to be the last book in this world, but it's the second book of the duology. To avoid spoiling you, I'm going to tell you a very short premise of what happens in the first book and what we're going to see in the second, without spoiling. In the Dominions, the dead don't really die. They stick around and cause all sorts of trouble until a bonesmith comes along and cuts them loose from their earthly remains. Our main character, Ren, who's from the House of Bone, wants to be a ghost fighting warrior, but sabotage causes her to fail her trials and she gets banished to the border wall. But when a prince of gold gets kidnapped and is taken beyond the wall, Ren sees her chance to prove herself. The only problem is she has to team up with one of the kidnappers, Julian, a fierce ironsmith from the exiled House of Iron. And get this, they're enemies with the House of Bones. So enemies to lovers tropes for those of you who like that a very well-built fantasy world i mean the world building in this one it was amazing and of course i think i should tell you this is dark ya fantasy and the characters are so convincingly ya they're perfect i love the execution of the first book if you haven't heard about it i have a spoiler free book review for bonesmith you can check it out if you like i can't wait to read ghostsmith this book definitely deserves more hype and finally, the last book on the list is a middle grade fantasy book called Silverborn. This is book four in the Nevermore series written by Jessica Townsend. In my opinion, the Nevermore series deserves all the praise in the middle grade fantasy genre. It's absolutely perfect. Again, to avoid spoilers, I have to tell you what the story of Morgan Crow is about in the first book. Morgan Crow is cursed. Born on the unluckiest day ever, she's blamed for everything bad that happens in town. And to make things worse, she's supposed to die on her 11th birthday at midnight. But then this weird guy called Jupiter North shows up and he saves Morgan from these creepy hunters. He takes her away to the city, to the secret city of Nevermore, where she, Morgan actually realizes there that he wants her to compete for a spot in this organization called the Wunder Society. Now, what's the catch? She has to compete with a bunch of other kids who all have these extraordinary talents that make them stand out. An extraordinary talent that Morgan insists she doesn't have. So the bottom line is she has to go through these trials to stay in Nevermore and stay safe. Otherwise, she has to go back to her deadly fate. There's a big magical school trope in this whole series. It doesn't start in the first book, but you'll get there. I have zero complaints about the series. If you're into middle grade, Nevermore is perfect. It deserves all the praise. I gave both, I, I read book one and book two, and I gave both of them five stars because they're just perfect. If you're into the stuff, check it out. You won't regret. So that was it. That was all the 12 books I have on my list, on my radar for 2024. This list might expand, obviously, because I don't know about all of the books that are coming out. But so far, these 12 sound really promising. I love all of them. I will be checking them out, hopefully, all in 2024. Tell me in the comments, what are your most anticipated book releases for 2024? I really want to check them out too. As always, thank you for watching today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!